Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome back, everybody, to the absolute final finale of the first ever Clash series brought to you by Mansan. Here we are. It's, it's going to be... I'm speechless. I think, Mansan, you're going to have to take over from here. What have we got in store for the fans today? Oh, uh, well, it's that climactic final battle. Two ultimate bosses have entered the room. It's an Icelander. It's a chain, both with amazing pilots behind them, Ethnic Smoke, Mark Johnson. These guys are, I mean, they're they are very consistent players. They will take down ProQuest, RTNs in any format. And then here they are in Clash, proving that they still have what it takes to do so uh, with these really unique and really powerful decks that they're bringing to bear here. So yeah, it's a battle of ice. It's a battle of shadow. And we've seen these heroes pop off. We've seen these players do amazing things, but this is it. The final, who will win these League of Leviathan sleeves? That's the grand prize, folks. It's not 2K. I don't have that kind of money, but the honorary League of Leviathan membership will go out today to one of these players. And that is something worth fighting for. We've got one player from the winner's bracket, one from the loser's bracket. Let's see how it goes down. Now let's take a look back at the brackets these two have had to fight through here because Ethnic Smoke made it look Easy blasting his way all the way through Gogen Gaming on Azalea, then on to Zach Bun on Bravo, taking down Wes just yesterday on Dash. Now find himself in the finals at a clean 3-0, undefeated. So as we go through and revisit his victories here, it's always been with that cheeky arcane damage. Icelander's not a deck who's being honest about her wins. No, sir. It is not physical damage that's getting over the top. It's all of the abusive ways to just stack up arcane damage when your opponent can no longer pay for it. That's what happened in that first game. It's what happened again on the second game when Lethal was presented by Zach Bunn here on that red disable. And it's what wrapped up the game as well versus Dash. Wes Wilson was not able to defend out on that ice bolt into the waning moon. And that wrapped things up pretty nicely to put Ethnic Smoke here in the finals. On the other side of the bracket here, we've had Mo Bogsley who found himself dropping into the loser's bracket after losing a game against Wes that was just a bit too quick for him but he faced Elaine on Kasai and was able to take her down, moving along to Zach Bunn, where he then advanced on to take Wes in a rematch that he did win. And just to look back on his games here, there was that early match, Arachne versus Chain, where he just presented a little bit too much damage and was able to go over the blocking capabilities of Kel there for that win. Of course, he was then knocked down by Wes and then got his revenge, rightly so, against Wes again. And this takes us right into today's match. Chain versus Icelander. On the left, we've got Ethnic Smoke piloting the Ice Wizard Icelander versus Mark Johnson on the right piloting Chain. And this is a clash of two very powerful heroes in the Clash format. Uh, and this is because Icelander really didn't lose many cards in transitioning to this version of the game, right? She's still got really, really powerful commons in Aether Ice Vein that she's got access to. Of course, those two hand attacks where you can pitch your blue, come in for your, your Wounded Bull, your Findle's Fighting Spirit, those are still really strong and all available in this format, but Chain got that buff of being able to run Seeds of Agony. So this is something that uh, Mark hasn't really had to flex that often of actually setting up huge, huge Blood Debt turns and pitching into uh, all these different combo pieces that he's accrued in the Blood Debt Zone, or in the Banish Zone, but this could be one of those matchups where he takes it a little bit slower. So I'm, I'm eager to see how, do they, how they take this, but... Right now, it is Chain going first, just throwing a Consuming Volition for four with Go again. Yeah, of course, in this first attack, there was no arcane damage before the attack, uh, well, didn't hit, but even if it did, there would be no discard happening from Ethnic Smoke's side. We've got some Razors on some Rosettas happening here. We're chipping through just two damage on that first turn, but that's a pretty good start with an arsenal included from Mark. Yeah, because Icelander is already down that two life, right? She starts at 18, and part of that balancing act and the reason she starts lower as a wizard is because if you go first, you normally throw tall enough arcane damage that your opponent can't really block it. So that that uh, that health deficiency is normally balanced when they go first, but going second and then taking an additional two from Razor probably feels pretty good from where Mark's at, but Ethnic Smoke does not slow down. He pops Goliath and returns immediately here with a Wounded Bull for 10. That is half of Chain's HP, that he doesn't get a Carrying Husk to just easily block out. Yeah, I think uh, Ethnic Smoke is pretty happy with that 10 attack. And, you know, some might say, oh, it's a bit early to crack your equipment. But when the game, like like you just said, when you're swinging for half of someone's lifetime, it's, it's probably all right to get the equipment involved uh, at the early stages. 
But I remember when this game first just fired up, we saw the Rosetta Thorn and the Waning Moon pop up on the sides, and these are going to be two of the most powerful weapons in any format. So I think both of them are going to be put to very good use in this game. Yeah, it's about hybridizing damage, right? Both these decks are doing that, uh, where Chain is going to be splitting some arcane damage coming in from Seeds of Agony, potentially Rune Chance, uh, Rosetta Thorn, of course, and the Icelander decks, the way they're built these days, do the same thing. The Waning Moon is going to be the uh, main powerhouse in actually shooting arcane damage at them, maybe some other blue spells from Arsenal, but their active player turns are normally going to throw eight, seven damage attacks. So they're both decks that are splitting and trying to make it really hard to just fully block out all the damage they're throwing at each other. So with Mark here, he starts off with just a blue Mavrian, adding an extra hit effect rune chant generation to that red meet and greet. Uh, and it's fully blocked out by a very, very smartly played sink below. No breakpoint leak there. Just a nice clean block. Yeah, with a really nice clean, you know, block four for an attack of four. We've got a soul shackle coming in now to give the Rosetta Thorn go again. Beautiful graphics popping up on screen here. We've got a little purple <laughs> number two and two on the yellow. That's two physical, two arcane coming in. Ethnic Smoke's taking his time. How about we think about this one? Because of course, the more cards you're blocking with the less things you're going to do in uh, your turn, but I think Smoke have to take that to another level and think about the arsenal for the opponent's turn, defending, keeping cards left over, and he's opting to go down to 12. 12 versus 13, the points are dropping down a little bit, but as Chain's game goes on, of course, more cards going into the banished zone to grow the hand, quote unquote. Yeah, and that's an interesting point of, of game progression, right? When Chain takes the game longer, he gets more and more blood deck cards uh, that are likely to be banished at the start of his turn and then basically gain intellect with this extra zone of cards that he can play from the banished zone and that's a very very scary prospect for most decks it's hard to interact with that but icelander is the kind of deck that maybe can abuse how much blood debt starts building up and throw some disruption that locks out chain from playing out those turns and taking some blood debt himself so as the game progresses here we'll see if ethnic smoke decides to attack at that angle because in the early game he's keeping it nice and clean just throwing stuff like we see right now. Red Aether Ice Vein coming in for 5 Arcane, threatening that on-hit discard with this Arcane damage, and trying to buy a little bit of tempo as well with a Glacial Horns to freeze Arsenal that Mark went ahead and threw Stubby's st Stubby Hammers over, I, I guess, but just to be clear, that is a frozen Arsenal. Yeah, it breaks my heart to see Stubby's used in such a way, but uh, at least it's getting some use. Now, it's quite interesting. We've got the three Arcane Barrier on Mark's side. He's looking at five coming at him right now, but many decks, especially the aggressive ones, are often sort of saying, oh, I'll run AB1, maybe a two, but a lot of them are trying to put the aggro on Icelander. But of course, I think it's because Chain takes a little bit of time to ramp up and to, to really get the juice flowing that Chain is able to adopt and try out this AB3 strategy. Prevent a little bit there, well, that was we'll actually a full play. committal, right? He popped Ebonfold uh, with the Spell Void 2 effect to just say, no, I will not discard a card. But he still lost a card entirely. He pitched a blue to fully protect himself from that hit effect. Uh, and, I mean, with a Frozen Arsenal, is that really the smartest use of an Ebonfold? His turn is already significantly slowed by not being able to play out of Arsenal, not having that many Soul Shackles to really build up threat there, and still losing a blue in hand to block it out. So... I don't know, Ebonfold there, sure, it bought two life, but did it buy room into disruption that was really worth it? Yeah, not many cards left to play with, but of course the Soul Reaping says you can discard a card to pay the cost of this one, and the Soul Shackle ahead of it's giving it go again. So we've got six coming in, we see Seeds of Agony, and a Riftbind chilling in the Banish Zone, looking probably to be played this turn, so... It's six first, and then there's a, a little bit more coming after that. So Smoke's really going to have to manage his hand and really think about how he's going to defend the probable onslaught of attacks this turn. But of course, at times, Chain can let things build up a bit, especially if it's a Rift behind our Seeds of Agony, to have those massive burst turns later on in the game. And I think that might be something Mark has to play for, because he's not running Snapdragons, like you pointed out. He's got full AB3 in those equipment slots, so his ability to try to spread threat and just burst out some crazy turn off the back of not only his base go again with Soul Shackles, uh, but committing Snapdragons is just not going to happen. And we already saw a Razor Reflex out of the deck as well, so his ability to go really, really wide maybe is maybe is kind of waning a bit <laughs> in the face of Waning Moon, uh, but 
uh, if he plays slower with the seeds and things like that, then he can go tall and that can be another angle for him to attack on. But he does play them out. He, he goes ahead and casts that seed uh, and the blue rift bind for just a little bit of damage. It's just three total on that two card play. Yeah, I guess, you know, as the life points trickle down on both sides, Mark's thinking, if for some reason I do have to defend heavily, these blood deck cards are going to be stuck there. So it could be good. What he's done and playing them out nice and early. We've got seven coming in from Smoke's side now. Oh, it's a fight and fighting spirit. That is eight value behind that seven attack because there's a life gain coming in as well. So this not only presents seven, it's also healing ethnic smoke. Just that little bit that's going to make it even more annoying for Chain to close out this game because there's there's multiple lose conditions for a Chain player, right? You can just not be able, you can just not deal enough damage and risk decking out uh, because these uh, these soul shackles will banish more and more more of your deck each turn. And so if you can't land enough damage to kill your opponent, that starts becoming an issue. On top of that, if you commit all of your resource cards into paying for your attacks, like Chain most likely wants to do, he wants to keep his blues, play out attacks from the banish zone, then Ethnic Smoke can abuse knowing how many resources are in play to just try to end the game with arcane damage. So uh, extending the game here is always just going to be risky for Mark. There's, there's more things that the Icelander can interact with than I think the Chain is really comfortable uh, playing around. And this is actually one of those interactions as well. The, the players here were talking about the response windows for the Soul Shackle banishes because Ethnic Smoke as an Icelander can play out instants from Arsenal. One of the ways, one of the windows he can respond to is the individual Soul Shackles. So he's very smartly wanting to see the first two Soul Shackles, just know how much damage is potentially coming, and then maybe respond before the last one of the turn. So two Seeds of Agony came in here and he still said no response. And this is now all adding up to a red plunder run from Arsenal adding plus three, or I actually don't know if that was from Arsenal from hand, but it's adding the hit effect nonetheless. Uh, it looks like it was from Arsenal with these Seeds of Agony as well. So that's eight damage now presented with Go Again coming up after it. Yeah, it's quite incredible. It, it was the Red Plunder Run, which got frozen a few turns ago. Right, so right. that's really um, messing up with the tempo and the pace of the game from Mark's side of things. You know, often a, a chain player, when they're getting up to sort of three or four shackles, they'll just be like, yeah, I'll take it. But, uh, you know, if uh, if Mark took that Fighting Spirit attack and went down to three, it's just one arsenal away from a game over. So it was quite good to defend as heavily as he did. And now on this side of things, Ethnic Smoke defending seven from the uh, Bounding Demigon of six. It's got go again. So the Thorn's coming in next with the classic two and two. Ooh, it's a two and two that lands. Ethnic Smoke down to four. Uh, this is going to feel pretty scary because on the, uh, the other side of this, right, when you're facing a chain, you're on a bit of a clock because of, at some point the Soul Shackles will give enough value to the Chain player that their four card hand is now maybe a seven or an eight card hand. And you don't want to have to face the amount of damage coming from that kind of thing. So Ethnic Smoke, yeah, he goes down to four, but he wants to prioritize keeping disruption in play so that Chain never really gets to just say, yeah, no blocks, no interaction that I have to deal with, and I'll just slam you with my four cards in hand and on top of whatever I banish. So that's what Ethnic Smoke's playing for here. It's five damage coming in with his Aether Ice Fane, of course, another on-hit effect threatened, and being able to arsenal that Polar Blast coming up as well is just a free cycle. Pitch a blue for eventual three damage on the Waning Moon, and one Frostbite sounds pretty good. So he's happy to play for that here, and obviously when Mark goes to five, I mean, three damage on Waning Moon looks scary in and of itself. Yeah, it's, it could be three on my turn, three on yours, or it could be three. Wait a little bit. Here's some arsenal, and then another three back on my turn again. It, it looked like uh, Ethnic Smoke was in a little bit of a dire situation when they went down to four. But uh, if you do the math and you look at the next few turns, I think it's uh, still a very, very close game. And Polar Blast is going to, well, make it even closer. Yep, it's coming in to, to deal with that interaction I was just talking about. So all the banishes have resolved except for the last Soul Shackle. So with the information in play, knowing that there was likely only one or two Blood Deck cards for Chain to be playing out that turn. Ethnic Smoke went ahead and committed the Polar Blast, giving a Frostbite to, I guess, hopefully throw a wrench to what Mark was going to play out here. But you know that, that Unhallowed Rites cost one anyway, so there was no way he was going to be able to play through this turn without pitching something. But that was the bit of hidden information. That was the last shackle that Ethnic Smoke couldn't see anyway. So uh, he couldn't exactly play for that with full knowledge, but it was it's still a really smart play to play that way. Uh, and this is that reminder, hey buddy, you have a Frostbite. Yeah, so 
Marth is now. He's he's got to take this frostbite into consideration for his turn. It's always something you got to keep in mind when coming up against Icelander. But uh, I think we've got enough resources. We've got the Soul Shackle off, and uh, we are coming in with Unhallowed Rites Blue. It's not going to be able to target a Hal from Beyond here, which is normally where you really get the value engine going, right? You just throw this plus three pump back into your deck, but it's not something that Mark's actually seen come up in this cycle of the deck just yet. So it's a red Seeds of Agony that's going to the bottom here, but more importantly, it's only two damage presented. That blue Seeds of Agony will not trigger on a one cost, and with only two physical on the board right now, that is not lethal. And in theory, not something that this smoke really has to respect, but he's going to. He's going to throw in the Ironhide and say, let me see what else your turn is presenting. Nice. Yeah, of course, two points, not quite lethal, but we've got we've got to go again. We've got a few cards left in the hand. So he's going to be putting Ethnic Smoke under the gun here a little bit. We've got the Tremor of Erchel coming in for six. And this one does not have a go again, but it's definitely enough to force some type of defense from Smoke here. Well, it's coming in for six, right? And without Snapdragons, that's just it. That is the end of the turn. So that gives information to Ethic Smoke to say, okay, well then I've got opportunity here to just smack you with the Waning Moon, land a little bit of free damage, get you down to three, and then use the rest of my hand to save life as I want. But more importantly, he is just playing with full information that that was the end of the damage that turn. So he's able to comfortably go down to one and keep a three card hand back into a three life chain. And if he's landing any amount of damage, then this is incredibly scary because chain will have to deal with little ticks of blood debt as the soul shackles get higher and higher, especially without snapdragons to help force out potential clumping of attacks there. So this is uh, this is that damage leak, right? Seven coming in, that's not easily blockable. Uh, Mark throws in six, leaks one, and now the game's even two to two. Yeah, massive attack from Fiendal's fighting spirit and ethnic smoke over here. And um, yeah, the, the game's all tied up. Whether it's a waning moon on anybody's turn, that might be uh, a good amount of lethal there. Smoke's got one in the arsenal already. We've got uh, four cards. No, we've got four cards hitting the bin, I think, from our soul shackle there. Three good ones, three playable ones. So it will be quite a turn here, but um, there could be a window where Ethnic Smoke can strike for lethal damage. Well, those are attacks, right? But the, the two things you have to take note of in this situation is the amount of go again a chain could possibly have with this kind of hand. And there's always going to be the base one with Soul Shackle, right? But you're looking at four attacks in the Banish Zone. So you at minimum need to play out three of them somehow, be able to pay for all of them, be able to pay through whatever arcane damage is coming your way, not to mention at minimum the Waning Moon coming your way. And that's just to survive and at taking one blood debt down to one like that that's asking a lot of a two card hand it's honestly just not possible so as the turn plays out it is just going to be a slow realization that i believe marks a little bit trapped that was that was just too much blood debt for his hand to pay for and it's even worse because he's showing that he had two reds in hand so any arcane here yeah is just game this is a very good response to a lethal Rosetta Thorn is some lethal arcane damage of your own. And uh, there it is. Congratulations and well done to Ethnic Smoke. He absolutely played this game beautifully and has now walked home with a League of Leviathan honorary, honorary sleeve pack here. So uh, while he didn't play Leviathan for this tournament, Icelander is definitely a few uh, stone throws away from like how Leviathan plays. It's all right. All right. He did a great job for us on stream. And it was a lot of fun to cast the games. And a lot of fun to have you, Chris, in the house to join me. Uh, anytime, my man, Sam. Hey, um, everybody that's been watching the series, thank you so much. I hope that you've had a chance to try out the Clash format for yourself because it's not quite classic. It's not quite Blitz. It's, it's somewhere in between. And I think um, it's a little home where everybody can find something they like. Whether you're getting ready to sort of venture into the classic constructed world, play Clash. You can practice your sideboarding sick of blitz or you want to play blitz with a sideboard hey try out clash i know it's something that i've played a few games of around the place and well the chain and the icelander decks are definitely a good place to start so i think it's a very fun and exciting future for this format well hey if you start with icelander chain you're going to be miles ahead of if you start with Leviathan. so <laughs> this is a bit of a conflict of interest i think uh but this has been really fun to run through and all the comments i've seen from the community as well about how they've taken Clash and started to play on their own home uh, home stores 
and the reception the community's had for it has been really amazing. So now that this tournament's concluded, we're going to go back, talk with everyone who played with it, maybe come back with a bit of an announcement on some potential ban list changes or just like format changes. But overall, you know, this is for you all. So let me know in the comments things that you'd like to see change, things that you've observed over this whole series, and hopefully things that you've enjoyed along the way, because this wraps it, Chris. Like, this really, this is really it. I can't believe we're at the end already. It feels like we've only just begun, but hey, I don't know if it's me or if it's you, but it feels like the start of something new. <laughs> well, start of something new, but unfortunately, end of this video. So, Chris, thanks for joining me again, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.